Do you have low CPI but still you are highly motivated to get study in US? What the different university selection committee looks from you, what they want to see from your application. Does CGPA really comes in first or it comes in the latter part? Thus all the questions will be answered in this video. This video is to overcome your CGPA problem. Yes, yes, obviously if you have low CPI, don't worry, you can still target top admit in US. Hi, this is Shyam. Welcome to our series Admission in Focus. Here in this video, with us, Arpon is here. Arpon, hi Arpon. Hi Shyam, thank you for inviting me in your channel. And this evening, I just want to take 15 minutes only from you uh, to reach you with many informations how to bypass your low CPI problem. And Arpon here will share us, uh, share with us a very interesting a journey with journey of him uh, from non IIT background to uh, Texas. And that's a really great opportunity he has gotten. For that, congratulate, Arpan, congratulate for your thank success. Thank you, thank you, thanks, Shyam, thank you. I'm really happy. Arpan, are you introducing yourself to our viewers? Okay, uh, I am Arpan Paikar. Uh, I have completed my MSc from University of Calcutta, the Rajabajar campus. And before that, I have completed my BSc from Scottish Church College, and I applied for the fall 2020 uh, in the USA, and eventually I got my chance in Texas A&M University. Let's say uh, what happens next, because right now I can't go there uh, due to the travel ban. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, everything will be fine just within December, isn't? Lockdown is going on. Those are really good, bad things. Yes. Yes, I think so. Okay, Shayan, ask me what you want to ask me. Yeah, Arpan, uh, so from your non-IIT background, how do you feel that, how do you, you were demotivated in every point of your preparation from starting to getting admission? Well, first of all, when I did not good, when I didn't good in my jam exam, I got really frustrated because I didn't get any admission in any kind of either or uh, IITs and uh, people who are watching this, they actually know that uh, they have a belief that uh, people from IIT only can go to the USA. And I made my way to University of Calcutta for my MSc. And when I entered there, the total system was uh, very different uh, uh, from what I have heard from my friends in the IIT because. They were very much aware of the whole system, how to apply USA, how to go to the foreign universities, and we have no idea. And uh, as people know that that university has a very bad reputation how, uh, to score uh, in their scoring process. So I was really uh, felt very low during that period because I had a dream uh, to pursue my PhD in USA. So yes, I felt uh, really demotivated in some time, but what I want to share here, some of my seniors and some of my professors shared their ideas, shared their stories that it is doesn't, it, it is not actually matter from where you have uh, completed your MSc. It is the most important thing you have, you should have, you should have a very strong motivation for your PhD, for pursuing a PhD. And that's what I had. Yeah, Arpan, uh, this is a long journey uh, from preparation, then making SOP, then CV, and then the application, then getting admissions. This long procedure, don't you feel that people can be demotivated throughout any point of? Yes, yes, any any people can get demotivated, not uh, people from not non-IIT background. As Shion is from IIT background, uh, some people from IIT or either background, they also get demotivated because uh, who are listening to me, they should know that it's a very long process because it's um, uh, getting a admission in US is not just like having an exam like GRE or NQFL. And uh, GRE, the most frustrating exam I had in my life, uh, the, I completely exhausted after my examination. And okay, fine, uh, somehow you got very good marks uh, in your GRE, TOEFL, and you have good CGPA. Still, you can be demotivated because what I am telling here is a very long process. First, first, first comes you should have to write a very good SOP, and people should know that writing a good SOP needs lots of efforts, lots of time, because at least you should have uh, two or three weeks for having a very good SOP. 
okay now you have your good sop then next thing from your uh, cv you should have a very presentable cv and it's not like just you are noting down some points or your achievements it's not like that it should be very much presentable so those things needs lots of effort so those in those times you can get demotivated and what i really feel that uh, people uh, who are applying in the month of november say first week of november they start applying and uh, it's a uh, uh, normal process that uh, you applied and within a month or half, one month and half you can get the decision from there say you got rejection you got uh, two or three rejection at a time and you get frustrated but what i want to tell here uh, most of my uh, application i did in the month of december in the month of january and when i was applying i had some rejection but still i didn't stop there because i always uh, told myself that i shouldn't stop there because if i stop here i can't make it and after all all my uh, waiting and all my patience has come to an end and i got a good chance and anbon uh, as from non iit background you have given a many importance to your sop making and cv making so for that uh, what's the timeline you started to make your cv uh, well SOP. Uh, well uh, by the end of october i had my gre score i had my 12 fail score and uh, when uh, one thing i want to mention i didn't have very good uh, score in those exams okay so uh, there's also a negative point so i watched lot of videos in youtube i watched uh, i read various things that universities gives lot of importance towards sop or a good cv so i thought that i should have a very good sop and i started writing my sop by the end of october and i finished uh, it almost in the mid of december so uh, you can actually understand that i have tried a lot i have edited my sop for the lo long for a long time and finally i got my final sop so uh you should have a time at least one month for sop and cv making yeah and in which month you got your acceptance normally in which month people get their acceptance okay uh, normally most of the universities uh, open their portals from the november and uh, many universities close their portal in the mid of december so if if the university application portal closes in december you should have a a uh, decision from there within uh, mid of january or in the first week of february this is a normal process okay but uh, interestingly i got uh, acceptance from uh, tamu at a very later stage it was in the mid of april and uh, now people think why this happened what i personally believe that uh, i had to compete with those people who are from iit background who are from iser background who have a very good cgpa who have a very good project uh, whose profile is better than me so actually here i want to share a story one of the senior professor from there uh, he emailed me in the end of february and told me that i should wait because they haven't made any concrete decision about me and i had to wait for the whole march uh, and i uh, at last i thought i will not get any chance from there but thankful Uh, i am really grateful to them that they have given me a position in their university in the i got my acceptance in the mid of april so i want to share here that don't get frustrated uh, you can uh, you can meet many people you can watch many of your friends who are getting acceptance very early stage but you are not getting you are getting rejection and people get frustrated there they uh, they skip the process so what i want to say don't get don't lose your motivation you have to stick with your ideas Exactly, and from non-IIT background, you have overcome many problems, many difficulties you have faced in each points of your journey through throughout the preparation, through the admission application procedure. So, how many university you have applied, and how to how one should uh, think about that? Which university and how much university they should apply? Okay, uh, that uh, what number I should actually select? That varies with people to people, but. Uh, as i am from uh, university background and what i have told before i had to complete uh, with those people who are from iit background and uh, as you know that uh, in the universities of usa iit or iser are well recognized we are not well recognized so there is a risk factor okay so 
first of all, I have uh, applied for 40 universities. Yes, it's a big number, but I can tell you what was my mindset uh, during choosing such uh, a big number. First of all, thank, I am really thankful for, uh, for my family because they helped me financially. And most importantly, if you are financially secured and if you are from non-IIT background, then you have to think two points because there is a probability. You don't actually know what actually goes on. So it's a game of probability. So you, ch you can choose, uh, 10, you should choose at least 10 plus university, then there is a high chance that you will make one of them. And next thing, uh, I think Shine also will exist that different university uh, have a different committee, uh, graduate selection committee, who actually decide who will get the chance in the graduate course. Now, every committee has their members and they have a different mindset. Some university only focus on your CGPA, only focus on your GRE to other score. And some university doesn't, doesn't care about that because you are going there for pursuing a PhD and PhD not like that. How much good English you can speak, how much good English you can write, or what is your CGPA? It's about your motivation. It is, it is about your idea. So they give importance to your whole profile. They actually read your research prospect. They read your uh, SOP very carefully. What I can say that uh, what I felt during that process, the whole process is that, and I also talked with lots of people. They also told me that. When you are applying, say you are applying, and uh, uh, when they got your application, they first look at your SOP. Then they look at you, if they like your SOP, uh, then they will look at your CV. And if your CV is very presentable, very well informed to them, they, then they will go to your GRE and total score. Well, uh, I want to mention here one thing. Uh, you should have a good TOEFL score because and you you must have to take care of your speaking and listening section. I think Shine also will agree with that, that they give most importance towards the speaking and listening section because you have to serve for TA for one year and uh, without good communication skill, you can survive there. And next thing, next thing they will come to your CGPA and if uh, you, uh, if they like you, then they will process your application towards those uh, professors who have selected, uh, whom you have selected in your SOP, and if they give green signal, then the department will give you a uh, send you a offer letter. So uh, why I am elaborating this because if you can understand from my uh, discussion that if we break that whole process part by part, then CGPA, the matter with the CGPA comes at a very later point. So don't get frustrated. What I am want to share here, don't get frustrated if you are from non-IIT background, if you have a good, if you have a bad CGPA, don't get frustrated because CGPA comes at a very later point. What makes you very different from the others is your SOP, how you present there, how can you, your SOP should reflect your ideas, your motivation. That's the most important thing. They actually try to find such people who have a very good motivation in the PhD life because you know, PhD life is a long time, and uh, if you get demotivated uh, for this process only, then you can't survive for the PhD. Okay, so what's important is your motivation. Uh, so I think that's the most important thing, not the CGPA. Exactly, as Orpon mentioned, there are some, some states of selection. So first they look at your SOP and then CV. If it's look very appealing, if it's look very attractive, then they will go towards the, your uh, CPI. So CPI doesn't matter. That's the, our, our story, CPI doesn't matter. And he has proved that CPI doesn't matter. We can achieve and he has achieved. But as he has motive, he was motive was that to get a good admissions in a good university at US. So this motivation has been the important things. I think uh, we have got a many, many, many helpful informations from uh, Arpon. And Arpon, uh, very, very thank, very, very thanks for uh, giving us the information for sharing with uh, sharing with us your journey. And thank you very much from our channel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shayan, and it was really pleasure. Hope your channel will grow uh, in some days uh, because uh, lots of people with those questions are really they are getting frustrated uh, with those questions. So I think this conversation with you will help them a lot and can actually motivate them.
exactly and our focus is to give you the informations as per your need whatever single informations you need you just let us know you just mail me if you have any questions till now if you have any questions till now on cpi and how to write it so be over cpi if you have low cpi then you can directly contact with arpon i will give his mail in the description box and you can comment also and arpon will answer it don't worry and uh, so that's all that's all we you can make free make free to talk with us if you have any questions if you have anything to ask with us and that's all for cpi problem if you have any other problems just let us know and we have another interesting video like how to write sop how to write a cv how to make your cv very attractive all the things all the things you will get in our series just keep watching and until then this is shyam thank you bye bye